Hey, what's going on guys? Composing Gloves here. And today we're doing the second video in music theory. Um, what is this? Music theory from the ground up, I believe is what I'm calling it this go around. And we're talking to talk about the staff. Now, a lot of these basic concepts sort of get mixed up with a lot of other basic concepts. So there may be some overlap between concepts, but let's really quick. I've got a, a thing of music score open. And I really quick want to talk about navigation that'll just help you. So if you hold down control and scroll or mouse wheel while you've clicked on something, you could zoom in and out. And if you hold down shift and scroll or mouse wheel, it scrolls it left and right. So that's something that uh, is just not that intuitive, but that's how it works. Well, I think it's actually very intuitive. Just figuring it out is not that intuitive. Someone sort of needs to tell you. So we're going to talk about this thing called the staff. Now, you know nothing right now. At least I'm assuming some of you probably have some, some pretty good ideas about what these things are. Or maybe you already know music theory. But... You like have no concept of it right now. It's just black magic to you. That's where I'm starting. For, my assumptions are starting from. So, all right. Now we see these things. We got all these lines and we've opened up this piece of software and it's done a whole bunch of things for us. This isn't necessarily a good thing because it's doing things for us that are really great auto as automated processes, but it's bad in the sense that we're not conscious of everything that's happening. So we are just going to ignore all this other stuff and we're going to become conscious of it as we move along here. But what we're focusing on is we have these five lines. One, two, three, four, five. And there's five of them. And they go across this way. And they, they repeat. We see this repeating line thing. And then they have all these little dots and stuff on them. Ignore everything else. Just look at these horizontal lines. Well, this is a very interesting thing. So let's say that you music theory doesn't exist yet. No one's invented written music yet. And you're sitting there on a rock listening to your friend you know, sing a song and maybe they're not the best singer. Maybe they are a really good singer and they inspired you. They inspired you to say, hey, you know what? I want to, you know, write that down. That sounds like a pretty good thing to write. And luckily we have some some basic language writing. So we're familiar with the concept of writing on paper. So now we're like, oh man, oh man, bro, dude, I got to come up with some way to represent this thing on paper. And so what do you do? You get out your, your book and you say, well, they're singing. And as you're singing, it takes obviously it takes time for them to sing. If time, if there was no time, then I wouldn't hear them singing that it, because it takes time for the vibrations to reach you and for you to register. And they hold the notes for different amounts of time. So you're confronted right off the bat with this. Well, geez, if you're gonna write down what she's saying or he's saying or whatever, whoever it is that's singing, you you're gonna need some way to measure time. So you're like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna write out these lines. Okay, so you write out these lines and you write out. Uh, originally, you only really actually need one to represent time, but you're going to write out five because you're going to write down notes. And each one of these lines, there's going to be, it's going to represent a different pitch. So you're like, oh yeah, when they sing like this note, like uh, whenever they sing the uh note, that's going to be this line right here, this middle one. That's my middle note. And so you're like, okay, this is great. And, but at this point, all you've got is five lines. And what's neat is you've now represented time, but now you need some way to meter it. You need some way to say this amount of these lines represents some amount of time. So when, like, let's say every time your friend sings for five seconds, you want it to be metered here. Now, this isn't, this is, I'm just trying to wrap your head around the concept of a meter because it's something that uh, I struggled with when I was brand new, but I was like a kid at the time. So maybe you get it right away. But you're like, all right, so in between, I'm going to write down these lines, and every single time in between these lines, there will be five seconds. And, you're like, and that's what you do, and you come up with this, and you say every every single time. And and you go along with that. It's a very crude sort of way of thinking about it and a very base way of notating it. But you've got a way now. So you can put down you can put down some symbols here, and you know that this is like five. So if you want it to be something to last 2.5 seconds, you need some. You need one symbol for five seconds, meaning it takes up this entire time, and then you need another symbol for like two point five seconds, like half that time. And you're like, oh, what if I want like half of that? So one point two five seconds. So you come up with another symbol, and so you're like, well, in order to fill up one of these spaces where I drew my line, so in between these two lines, I have five seconds. You say, okay, I need a uh, something to represent two point five seconds, and then I still have another. I still have half that bar left. I still have half that. That's that time left. And I can't just leave it empty. If I leave it empty, then it, the time disappeared. Where'd the time go? So you, you can't do that. That's against the rules. Like, not cool, bro. Time travel doesn't exist yet. When we get time travel music, then we'll talk. So, but if time travel existed, then it exists. And it would already exist right now because then they could time travel back here. So it's one of those weird things. So anyways, you put down two 
uh, things to represent. There's nothing being played there. And you make it represent the same a symbol for 2.5 seconds of nothing being played. And so that's a, just so I'm just trying to make you conscious of a way of thinking about the staff. So this these five lines called the staff. And these bar lines, these are, well, that's what they're called. They're called bar lines. And these bar lines allow us to say within this, within this amount of our staff, this much time elapses. And they use something called the beat to say exactly how much that's worth. They use something else called the tempo. But we're just focusing on the staff right now. So we're going to toss that out of other stuff like pff, that's like later for people who think more harder than we do. So we come up with this and we, we have a way now to put down pitches and we can use different symbols. So we can put down symbols and we can, you know, type in some pitches here. And, and, you know, write out a melody. So if we, so if we come into finale, we notice that this thing, it's cross platform. So we can do, 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 do. And so I'm not going to explain what the symbols do or what they mean or the rhythm or nothing. All you want to know is there's these five lines and we notice that we have symbols for when notes are being played and we have symbols for when nothing is being played and they each represent an amount of time. They take it like this, for example, is called an eighth note. It represents one eighth of a beat. So we've come up with this subdivision. And some people will probably like, where the heck did this division come from? Well, now you know where someone like thinking about it, it's pretty reasonable conclusion that that's the way they came to this sort of understanding. And so these are like, nothing's being played here. We can't have it just disappear out of nowhere. So that's something that a program does for us that's sort of a bad thing is we don't have to calculate our rests. Now we're going to, as we learn, uh, how to do that. But the program will do it for us occasionally, actually not occasionally, quite often I've had problems with Finale where it miscalculated and put the wrong number of rests or notes in. Like I had more notes than could possibly exist in that amount of time. And so you'll, so being able to do this is a viable skill still. And you'll be able to handwrite out your music. So it's a really, really kind of interesting type deal that we've got going on here. That's the staff. If you have any questions about the staff, let me know. Um, subscribe and have. A blessed day. Hey, Composer Gloves here, and this is the first video in the Contact from the Ground Up tutorial series. Now, right at the beginning, just so you know, we're going to talk about what Contact is, and we're going to, this is not a tutorial series that's going to go into advanced Contact scripting, and it's not a tutorial series that's going to review every single library. I'm going to have a whole separate series where I just review library.